What's going on guys? My name is Brian, also known as that journaling guy, and today I am bringing you a little bit of a different video, mostly because my office was a disaster, but I really wanted to record this while I ended up using a green screen. Don't judge me, but today I'm unboxing my very first vintage pen. I know, I know, I said I was never going to get into vintage pens and I was all about modern pens, but this one, this one is special, okay? This one kind of caught my attention and and i have the privilege of now owning a new pilot murex <gasps> dun, dun, dun. okay so the pilot murex has been like a highly collectible fountain pen and if you don't know why let me explain to you why now, before we get into why this pen is rare, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the history and where Japan was at that point. Okay, so in the 1970s and 1980s, fountain pens experienced like a remarkable resurgence in popularity in Japan and marking a significant departure from the ballpoint pen dominated market of the post-war era. There were several factors that contributed to this resurgence, reflecting not only a shift in writing instruments, but also a broader cultural shift in Japan during that period. One pivotal factor was the emphasis on craftsmanship and quality that emerged as a core value in Japanese society during the 1970s. Japan had earned a reputation for producing high quality goods across various industries and this ethos extended to fountain pens. Japanese pen manufacturers such as Pilot, Platinum, and Sailor began producing exceptional fountain pens renowned for their craftsmanship, precision, and elegant designs. These pens were more than just writing instruments. They were expressions of artistry, craftsmanship that appealed to a middle class eager to embrace quality and luxury. Japan's economic prosperity in the 1970s and 1980s meant that more people had the financial means to indulge in luxury goods. Fountain pens, once considered a status symbol, saw increased adoption as a reflection of this newfound affluence. Owning a well-crafted fountain pen became a symbol of success and sophistication. Enter the Pilot Murex. So the Pilot Mu and Murex fountain pens, often regarded as iconic classics among fountain pen enthusiasts, have become rare and highly sought after collectibles in recent years. Their rarity today can be attributed to a combination of factors, which also shed light on why they were popular during the 1970s and 1980s. One significant reason for the rarity of the Pilot Mu and Murex today is their limited production and availability outside of Japan. These pens were crafted with meticulous attention to detail and engineering precision, resulting in a relatively low production volume. Moreover, during their initial release in the 1970s, they were primarily marketed within Japan, making them relatively unknown to the global market. This limited distribution added to their exclusivity. Additionally, the materials used in the construction of the Mu and Murex, including stainless steel and other high quality components, contribute to their durability. Many of these pens have stood the test of time and are cherished by collectors. However, their longevity means that fewer have been lost or discarded over the years, further reducing the available supply. Moreover, the Pilot Mu and Murex embody the technological innovation and quality that Japan was renowned for during this era. They featured cutting edge nib design, ink delivery systems, and a sleek futuristic design that resonated with the spirit of progress and excellence that defined Japan's rise as an economic powerhouse. Now that you have that little um, background as to why this pen is considered rare and why so many people are after it, let's get to the unboxing. I've had this now for like a week. I haven't used it because I really wanted to share this experience with you guys. So we're getting right into it in this moment. So I know the box isn't necessarily the fanciest box on the planet. It's not a crazy unboxing experience, but to be fair, this was a workhorse of a pen. Okay, like when it was out in Japan, I'm talking about like students would own this pen. This was only retailing for about 30 or $40 when it was out in Japan. And that with inflation and everything ends up being around 100 to $140 in today USD. So it wasn't an inexpensive pen, but it was a sign of sophistication. It was a sign of, of respect. Everybody, you know, the government was pushing the whole like educational reform and writing instruments played a really big part into that. So everybody was meant to be able to own this pen. 
And the thing is, since it was only available in Japanese markets, it's become really sought after here in the States. And I'm really, really, really excited about it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my God. And you know how I feel about like metal pens, right? Like metal pens are the way to go for me. I hate like plastic pens. I'm not a fan. So this was like a dream come true, but look at that design. Oh, this is nice. Let's see, we've got the M for the Murex. Let's get it on camera, please. Yeah, look how nice this looks. And so now if you don't know, there used to be a Mew pen, okay, which was a shorter pocket pencil that came out around the early 1970s. And then they came out with the Murex pen, which was like the like successor, which was meant to be a longer like a longer pocket pen. And let's open it up. Oh, look how nice this looks. Oh my God. Look how cool this looks. It is a, an entirely stainless steel unibodied like nib. So if you break the nib on this, if you drop it at all, it is catastrophic. Okay. It is terrible. You're, you're, the entire value of the pen is gone. Now to date it, we look right here and see if I can get a good thing right there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but on there, it says F then H681. So H is for the plant that it was made in. The six is for the month and the eight one is the year. So this pen was made in June of 1981. And you're supposed to be able to post it. Like there, as you could see, this is brand new. This is what's like amazing about this pen brand new because these notoriously are workhorse pens okay and what you tend to see with them from what i could tell when you buy them on stuff on ebay is you're gonna have scuff marks and like scratches because when you post it it is metal on metal pretty much but look how nice that looks oh my god i'm about to, about to bust <laughs> look how beautiful this is i i am I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Let's open it up. I know a Con 50 converter is not going to fit in it. And it didn't come with a converter at all. All right. So let's go find one real quick. If I'm remembering correctly, I believe the Con 20 is supposed to fit it nice and snug. Not to see. Oh my God. It's like it was made for it. Now it's not my favorite converter but it fits perfectly in here. So let's fill this bad boy up because I'm so excited to be using this. This probably might be my everyday pen. And yeah, officially this is my rarest pen, like the rarest pen in my collection. Because before this was probably my Visconti Orchard and Blossom. And to give you an idea, this is now running on most like bidding websites like eBay and stuff like that at about 250 to 300 dollars is what i'm finding it at i had a hookup i have a pen dealer that called me as soon as he got this in and he gave me a really good price for it so i did not end up paying that much but we're going to use the takesume pilot black ink oh god i'm nervous how he found it in this condition i have no idea this is like a pristine condition Probably have to squeeze it a little bit, right? To get the ink moving. All right, now we got it to write. Oh, first of all, I realize I can't have this ring on if I don't want to scratch it, so I need to take it off. But, okay, so my first impression. Okay, so my first impression on how it writes, it is definitely a Pilot Fine nib, okay? It is a little bit scratchy, a little bit hard to write with in the sense that it's just 
given me a good amount of feedback, but it is thin. It is very thin. And honestly, we, we know that Japanese like fine and extra fine are, they go crazy. Okay. They go nuts in terms of how thin they are. But this feels great though. I feel so fancy. I feel so sophisticated right now. You have no idea. And it fits my hand perfectly. This is just elegant. I feel so cool. Like, ah, look, at, look at it. Look at it. it just, yeah. Uh-huh. I am. Um, it's a pilot Marex, you know, like, don't, don't, pay, you know, you know, like, come on. This is so sick. Um, and of course the scratching around posting it, but when you're done, bloop. Wow. This has a super sturdy like pen clip. Oh, that actually comes up. There's like a mechanism inside of this that goes up and down. It's supposed to fit like multiple shirts and clip points. It's supposed to be a lot, like do a lot, but you're supposed to be able to throw this in a bag, okay? And do whatever you want with it. Even unposted, I would write with this perfectly fine. Like it's a little bit light, okay? It's a little bit light without me posting it so i don't love the weight without having it posted but like this a little top heavy but it feels much better i want to write with this endlessly oh dude this is so this, i know this is gonna feel so good for long writing sessions i absolutely know now one of my biggest things is the fact that it was going to have the unibody nib and what i thought was going to end up happening which i'm not experiencing right now was going to be like a lammy studio situation where the whole grip is just like a long piece of metal and it was just going to keep sliding down because i have sweaty hands okay i do i'm not afraid to admit it team sweaty hands i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay and so what ended up happening with the studio is that every time i was writing for it every like every time i was writing with it it would just keep slipping down and slipping down and slipping down and it was so frustrating i'm not seeing that issue here oh my god i'm in love i'm sorry if i'm quiet i'm just freaking out <gasps> um, oh my god this might be one of my <gasps> this might be my daily writer this might be my daily writer. I'm, uh, uh, I'm freaking out. Okay, so at the heart, the Murex MR500's appeal is its design. The pen features like a sleek and minimalistic stainless steel body, which is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also really durable. And I could feel that in handling the pen. The material choice reflects a Japanese like desire for precision engineering and quality. Like you can see it in the design here. The slim and cylindrical shape of the pen, along with the brushed stainless steel finish, exudes an understated elegance that has made me feel like sophisticated. It feels timeless and classic. Mind you, this is from the 1980s, and this design looks really good now. This this could be a pen that could be used today, and which is weird that it stopped being produced considering its popularity. It was very, very popular in the 1980s and only became more popular in the West when people couldn't get it. So it's a little concerning. I mean, in 2008, they did do another like version of the Murex. It was the M90. It was a little bit weirder. Like, I don't think it was an elegant and timeless design as the original MR500, but they did do it. And that was for Pilot's 100th anniversary, I believe, 100th anniversary. They might do it again with popular demand. I remember that they only, well, I read that they only produced around 9,000 at the time. I wasn't sure how much they went for, but I'm, I'm like ecstatic about this pen right now. Now, the, the craftsmanship in this pen is really what's setting it apart for me. It's the cap lays completely flush with the pen. There's like no edges. It feels sharp. I know it's going to scratch up, but I know that I'm going to be able to just throw it in a backpack. And I wanted to just share this with you guys. I wanted to share this experience because I, you know, it was never a grail pen for me. But as soon as my guy told me he had one of these, I had to buy one off of him immediately. And I'm so happy I did. Hopefully I can have a full review of what this pen like does for me, a full experience after a couple months, because I can promise you right now, I'm going to be using this very, very often.
So that was my unboxing experience of the Pilot Murex MR500, okay, the 1981 version, and I am in love, okay? Those are my first impressions, those are my ideas. I am so excited to use this pen. It is the rarest pen I have in my collection. It is the most exciting. It is my first vintage pen. There's a lot of firsts going on with this pen right now, and I can't wait to give you guys a longer review of why you should probably get this, because I'm already giving it a high score. I'm telling you right now, I'm biased. I'm in love. I'm gonna be using this every day. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, tell me what the rarest pen in your collection is, so maybe I can get it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.